YouTube hosts almost 1 billion videos that anyone can access with just an internet connection. The fact that such a complex service is able to exist is insane. Around 1 million hours of new content is sent to these databases each day. But it may surprise you to find out that, despite the massive sizes the files take up, when compared to the uncompressed files, it is minuscule. The extreme methods required to store all this content is extraordinary. There are two main kinds of compression, lossless and lossy. Lossless compression attempts to express the exact same information in a smaller space, without losing any data. A common example of this is zip files. The output must match the input exactly, or else the data would be corrupted. On the other hand, lossy compression takes away data, reducing the quality of, let's say, an image or a video in order to save space. This is the type of compression that YouTube can take advantage of. Before I go into the compression methods, note that these are simplified, and explaining the mathematics and logic behind these would take hours. One of the primary lossy methods is intra-frame compression. Intra-frame looks for redundancies within a frame, and does not compare them to each other. For example, if there is a group of colors in a frame that are similar, the algorithm will find the average color. It's a little difficult to see, but notice how 19 different colors emerged into one. You can see in this example how this would be significantly more efficient than storing whole frames. The problem with this compression method is that you would have to encode the entirety of every video frame, meaning that there is still a lot of redundancy, especially when the frames don't fully change. This is where inter-frame compression comes in. This method looks at a group of frames and uses this selection to make predictions about any changes. If the movement is predictable and against a solid background, then the software will only encode the pixels that have moved. This is a terrific solution, as it only encodes the pixels that have changed, instead of the entire frame. Now, these prediction methods are very clever, but independently they have their disadvantages. For example, intercompression does not account for many redundancies, except for unchanged video. But what if we combine these into one compression algorithm? This is what is done by YouTube. YouTube uses Google's VP9 algorithm for lower resolutions and AV1 for higher resolutions. These algorithms find significant changes in the video frame and mark it as what is known as a key frame. This would then go through intra compression to remove redundancies in the image. And after that, inter frame prediction would be applied to the following frames. This is until a new key frame is found and the process repeats. When put together, these two methods create a high quality image, while roughly halving the bitrate. This saves significant expenses for YouTube. If they were to store the raw data on the servers, it would mean doubling their capacity in physical drives, and spending significantly more on bandwidth to stream videos to their users. Some connections might not even be able to handle raw videos. For a true 1080p stream, it would require the user to have a connection speed of at least 1 gigabyte per second which is absurd for one internet connection. Naturally, there are some limitations with these types of compression algorithms. Heavy movement on screen, such as snow or other particle effects, will cause the encoder to spend more bit rates on the snow. More confetti, more snow! This causes a noticeable dip in quality in other areas of the image. Another limitation is scene transitions, as there is no data to relate from the previous frames. But at the end of the day, a user is unlikely to be able to notice a drop in quality, right? Despite the effectiveness of these algorithms, it has come under some level of criticism from viewers. Particularly observant viewers are able to perceive the changes in quality that have to occur during the compression process. All of this just to stream Kinetica's videos directly to your screen. And I hope you'll stream my next video. See you next time.